Hey guys, you'll remember last week we talked about Saul and how he disobeyed God over and over and over again. And God was disappointed that he had ever made Saul king. So he sent Samuel to appoint a new king. And that king's name was David. Our story today is again from the Bible. In the beginning of the Bible, in the part called the Old Testament, in the book of 1 Samuel. And it comes from 1 Samuel chapter 17. Before we get started, I do have to let you know that I have some video clips in our lesson today. And at first, you might think that some of those video clips are of a really scary man. But they're just pretend. And I'll tell you right now that the man who's the really scary man is actually a really, really nice guy. So don't be afraid when you see our video of what we think maybe Goliath may have acted like. And that's our story for today, David and Goliath. Now God's enemies were the Philistines. You remember the Philistines? They were ready to have another battle with Saul and Saul's army. Well, David was just a boy. He worked out in the fields, watching over the sheep, making sure that all of the sheep were safe. He also ran errands for his father, whose name was Jesse. Now, one of the things that Jesse wanted David to do was to take food to his older brothers and bring back a report of how they were doing. So David decided to go visit his older brothers where they were, ready to have a battle against the Philistines. The men of Israel were waiting for the battle to begin. And when David got there, he saw a really big man come out and threaten the whole Israelite army. And evidently, David found out that this man had been doing this every day for the last 40 days. And it may have been something like this. This day, I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. This day, I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. This day, I defy. I defy. I defy. The armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. Over and over and over and over again, this giant man named Goliath would come out and yell at the Israelite army, demanding that they send a representative out to fight him. Do you think anybody wanted to fight that big scary man? They sure didn't. So every day, the Israelites just stood there and were afraid. You'll remember that the Philistines were God's enemy. Well, this man that was threatening them was the biggest, the tallest, the meanest fighter they had ever seen. He was so big that nobody else would have been able to wear all of his battle gear. He had a huge metal helmet. He had a huge set of armor over his chest. He even had metal shin guards and a giant spear. But David didn't understand why the Israelites were so afraid. David knew something that everyone else had forgotten. God was bigger than this giant man. In fact, God is bigger and more powerful than the scariest thing you could think of. Can you think of some scary things? Like what? God's bigger than that. What else? Oh, God's bigger than that scary thing. God is bigger than that scary thing. God is bigger than the scariest scary thing that ever existed. So David said, well, who is this man that makes fun of and teases the army of the living God? 
King Saul heard that David said this, and he said, Send that boy to me. So David went to the king, and he said, King Saul, let no man be afraid of Goliath. I will go and fight him. And king Saul said, David, you can't go. You're just a little boy. This man has been training to fight since he was a child. But what was David remembering that Saul did not know? Yes, God was bigger than Goliath, and God is the most powerful of all. Well, David said to King Saul, I tend my father's sheep. Once to protect the sheep, I have killed a bear. And I also killed a lion, and I brought all my sheep back from the jaws of the bear and the lion. This Philistine giant will be just like one of them, since he has made fun of God. The Lord, who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from this giant Philistine. So King Saul said, Okay, well, you go ahead then, and may the Lord be with you. So David got all of Saul's battle gear. He got a suit of armor. He got a big sword. He got a helmet. All the things that you need to stay safe in a battle, King Saul gave to David. But there was a problem. Can you think of what that problem might be? King Saul was a man... And David was a boy. So when David went to put the king's battle armor on, it might have looked something like this. Do you think David could fight a giant with a sword that's so heavy to lift and a helmet that he can't even see out of? David did not want that battle gear. They were too big and they did not fit. But David had something better than armor for his battle. Do you know what it was? It was God. He knew that God was on his side and that God was the most powerful of all. So David took his sling and he went down to the brook and he chose one. Two, three, four, five. He took those five stones. One, two, three, four. And he put them in his pouch, put it on his shoulders, and he headed out to find that giant man. And when he found him, this is what happened. Come to me with sticks? You come at me with the sword and with the spear and with the javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And did you hear what David said? He said, you, Goliath, come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have taunted. What did David remember about God? That God was the most powerful of all. David said, Everyone who saw the battle today would know that this battle 
was the Lord's battle. So the Philistine, he got up and he headed out to David. There he is, big scary man. And when he got out to David, David ran up to him. And David put his hand into his bag and he pulled one stone, a smooth, flat stone that he had gotten from the riverbed. And he put that stone into his sling. And he swung, 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 flop! And you know what happened? That stone struck that giant in the forehead and it knocked him over. David had won the battle because God was on his side. The Philistines saw their big giant man with his big giant spear and his armor and his shin guards. They saw him get knocked down to the ground and you know what they did? They got afraid and they started to run. They thought they wouldn't have to fight because they thought everyone was so afraid of Goliath that they would never have to do anything. But then when Goliath got knocked over by David's one stone, they turned and they ran the other direction. They ran away because God is the most powerful of all. So who was it that won the battle that day? Was it the Israelites? Was it King Saul? Was it David? No, it was God. God won the battle. The victory was God's. So we need to remember that when we are facing something that is scary or unknown, we can trust God that he will give us the strength to do really hard things if we put our trust in him. Let's thank God for taking care of us today and for being willing to give people like you and me the strength and power to do amazing things just like he gave David. Okay, let's pray. Our Father, you are a great and mighty God, and you are always, always doing great and mighty things in the lives of your people. We thank you for David. We thank you for his courage. We thank you for his trust in you, that he believed that if you were the God of the Israelites, that you would surely protect them and deliver them and you did, because you are the most powerful of all. I pray that you would help all the boys and girls today listening to this story to be able to trust you the way David trusted you, that you would give us courage, that you would give us confidence to trust in you, even when things seem very hard or very scary. We thank you that that victory, the victory between David and Goliath, was your victory. And we thank you that every victory in battle that is won today for your name and for your glory is yours alone. Thank you, Lord, for the greatest victory of all, and that is the victory of Jesus being raised from the dead after dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for bringing him back to life and seeing that that sacrifice was pleasing and acceptable to you. Thank you for the rescue that we have from our sin. Help us to trust in you today for that as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.